Hi. Hello. Welcome and welcome back to another episode on your favorite Letters Law YouTube channel. So today we are going to see about an interesting topic in terms of J meter. So in this video we are going to see about how to parameterize the value so that you can dynamically change the number of users. So if you see here. We have got the number of users, we have got the ramp up period, we have got the loop count, and even we can specify the thread lifetime. And let me just delete this for a moment because I've used this while I was trying this before. So, yeah. Um, so, in this video, we'll see that, and this will definitely help you because most of the times we run the test in non GUI mode, as I have advised. And uh, so, while we are running it through the non GUI mode, we can dynamically pass the number of users. So mostly this is where we can uh, approach the load test. And in fact, yes, I agree. Uh, some of you might have question like how to do the stress testing using non GUI mode. Yes, I'm still exploring on that. Uh, I'll very soon upload a video on how to do the stress testing using non GUI mode and especially using JMeter. So for now, in this video, we will concentrate on how to dynamically pass the number of threads the value for the ramp up period, the value for the loop up, loop count, and for the duration, right? So initially, uh, we have, a, it's a very simple JMeter script. It's a very basic JMeter script. I have one thread group. And in this, I'm having 10 threads with one ramp up period and one uh, loop count. So this is for just for sample. And now, uh, if I run the test, for example, if I just run this test, I can see the uh, results tree here and then in the summary report i can see the response times like how many number of samples it has executed and the average the minimum maximum response time so the same thing when we run it through the non gui mode we can see them in the html format so in this video i'll show you uh, how to do that in the html format as well so initially in the very first step so i want to parameterize the number of threads right so for that what is the value to or how can i parameterize it so for that, we have a command. Uh, we can just parameterize the value here. So I just have this value. Let me just paste it here and I'll just explain it to you. So it starts with dollar symbol and then a open curly braces with two underscores and then a capital uppercase P. And then I'm giving, uh, I'm defining this value as threads, comma one. So threads is where we're going to pass the value. And one is if we do not pass any value, automatically it will take one as the default value. So there will be like one threads which will be executed for this test. So I'm just replacing for the first time as threads because I do not want to change all the values and give you uh, confusion. So we'll just go through step by step. And in fact, I even recommend you to try the same thing so that you can understand how and where does it work. And yep, so let me save this script and let me open a command prompt. So here I have a command prompt to window. And then what I'll do is let me navigate through the uh, to the uh, location. So let me take this one here. So this is the file location. So let me navigate to the file location here. And now I have a command. So we all know uh, the JMeter command, which is JMeter minus N minus T. And then the test file is tested. So minus N stands for the non GUI mode and minus T stands for the file name, which is test.jmx. And then minus L, which is results.jtl, the results file. And now I will pass the threads, which is J threads. I'm going to pass 10 users, which is 10 threads, and J meter minus G. So here we are going to pass the JMeter results folder and then minus O, which is the test O1, where we are going to paste our, where we are going to uh, settle all the uh, HTML files. And now let me start the test. And yep, the test is running fine here. And let's wait for a few more seconds to get the test completed. So in this one, the place where I have just replaced the value is this one. So initially in the script, I have replaced it with minus P threads of one with one. And then in the command line, I'm just passing this value, which is J threads equal to 10. So just there'll be 10 users who will be running this test. And now let's go back to the command prompt and let's see if the test is completed. Let me go to the test folder and I'm opening the index.html file. 
and yep so we have got the test executed it has been passed there are no failures and we can see uh, we have got n number of executions that's been executed so let's now go back let me delete these stats and then uh, what i'll do is this time i'm going to make few changes so let me go to the jmeter and let me say this and yep this time i'm going to make changes to the ramp up okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to give the same way as the threads so i'm giving a dollar symbol open braces underscore underscore p ramp up comma one so the same way i'm going to pass the value of the ramp up in this variable name which is j ramp up if it has not been uh, given then it will just iterate only once so sorry the ramp up period is going to be just one second so let me save this script and we'll go back to the command prompt and now what i'll do is i'm going to bring the previous command but i'm going to add the j sorry uh, minus capital i mean uppercase j and then ramp up equals 20 and then before i run the test let's check the test one folder okay it's empty and then when i start the test we will now see the results shortly in our html folder or in that test one folder yes the test has now completed and let's go back to the index.html and yes again the test has been successfully completed and you can see the start time and the end time so based on that uh, the value which is the uh, 20 seconds so that has been added and after that it has been executed so it's like 21 second of execution so or since we do not have any response times or sorry we don't have added anything times or any of the pacing so it just come executed in just one second so the remaining is the ramp up period of 20 seconds yes so now let's move on to the third part which is the infinite part so sorry the loop count part so what i'll do is let me change this value let me give a variable to this value which is p loop count of one and then let's go back to the command prompt and i have bring up the previous one so in the previous one we have got the threads equal to 10 and then the j ramp up period which is ramp up period is going to be like 20 and now the loop count so minus uh, uppercase j and then loop count equals five so i'm just going to give just five loop count and then before i run because i do i we just need to keep this folder empty or otherwise we need to create new folders every time we want to create it otherwise if it is like already full then automatically it will throw an error and it will fail so let's go back to the jmeter and let's run this test and let's wait for the test to get completed and after that we can see the number of transactions the amount of iteration it has executed yes so now the test has been completed so let's open the index.html file and we can see more number of iterations because we were executing um, for a longer duration and in fact we have even increased the number of iterations as well so it has been executed for almost like 23 seconds yep so what i'll do is let me delete this file yep, let me delete this file and the uh, sorry, close this file and then let's delete this content because now i'm going to show you in terms of the duration so when it comes to the duration again it's going to be the same thing so i'm going to set up the duration as uh duration comma 60 so which is either it will be the value that we're going to pass or it's going to be 60 the default value and let's now go back to the command prompt and let me bring the previous one and on top of it i'm going to give the duration so it's uppercase j and then the lowercase duration equals 120 so by default it's like one minute and i'm going to run it for two minutes and then let's start the test and at the end of the test we will see the result so this is how it's, it's it looks so simple but this will definitely save you a lot of time in terms of um, giving you the values when you want to run multiple 
tests, like multiple tests with different uh, user load. You do not every time want to disturb your script where you want to set up the um, numbers. So this will definitely help you uh, in terms of hitting your tests with multiple parameters, like multiple user load, multiple duration, the ramp up, the loop count. Yep, so now the test has been completed and let's go and open this test and yep. So here we can see the test has been executed for like more than like 24 seconds. Sorry, 24, yeah, almost 24 seconds. Yeah, which is like more than two seconds. Yeah, which is, which is what we wanted to execute. And then we are, we are able to achieve uh, 160 uh, samples. So now you might have a question like, Okay, I've just showed you with one thread, so like one thread group. What if I have two different thread groups, right? So let me duplicate this. So now I have two thread groups. So what I have to do here is, I'll have to make a small change. So for the thread group one, I'll have to rename it as threads one. And then coming back to the thread group, I'll have to rename it as threads two. And let me save it. I'm not going to make any changes to the ramp up period or the loop count because I just want to run these tests at, uh, for the same duration, right? So whenever we run the test, we want to run all the third groups for the same duration of test with, anyways, we can change the ramp up period into different numbers, but I'll just show you how to do that with the threads so that you can use that for the ramp up as well. So let's go to the command line. So what did I do now is we have two thread groups. And in fact, we can, if I'm showing it for two thread groups, you can do it for any number of thread groups. And for two thread groups, so let me, open the command line prompt and let me bring the previous one. So here, if you see, we already have the threads, right? So let me go back to the threads. And initially we had J threads one, J threads, and then just making it to, uh, changing it to J threads two, uh, sorry, J threads one. And then I will add the another thread group. So it's again, another uppercase J and small case threads two equals 15. So the first thread group will have 20, 10 users and the second thread group will have uh, 15 users. And before this, so to know the difference, so what I will do is let me change this to 0, 3 and I'll copy this as well. 0, 3, 0, 3, 3. And then I'll change this to 04. And then I'll change for all the transactions inside as well. Just, I do not want to confuse, oh, sorry, it's 04. And then uh, 04, same, let me just copy this. 04, 04, 04. Yep. So now we have got one, two, three, and four, and we have got two threads with the thread group name, uh, threads two, and the preview. The first one is threads one, right? So let's go back to our test, and let's run. Before that, let me just check our thread, uh, the results. Yep. Let me delete that. And yep, we are ready. Yes, I've started the test. The test is running fine uh, so far. Uh, with two threads so we have got threads one and threads two with two different uh, set of numbers one with 10 and one with uh, 15 so let's wait and we'll see there's also like how does it execute it So the test has been completed and let's open the index.html and let's see the transactions, whether they got executed. And coming back to, yes, we have got three, we have got four. Yep, so it looks like, yeah, it's working fine. Um, we were able to execute multiple thread groups as well using the non-GUI mode by passing the values uh, like the way we did here. So we have got P threads one, P ramp up, P loop count, P duration, and the same way for the second third group as well. So yep, 
it's just another simple way but it will give you a lot of flexibility in terms of running your load test in different set of values so that i come to an end and we will try to replicate the same scenario into other mode as well like in jenkins or into azure devops or into github as well so with that uh, we'll meet in another interesting video until then it's bye bye from us and your favorite little slaw youtube channel bye bye